Hey gang, Scott here. Let's talk on one Photo Raw 2024. Yep, on one announced Photo Raw 2024 today, and they've been teasing a variety of the features already. One of them is Brilliance AI, and I want to unpack that in this video. Uh, and we haven't seen the software yet. Like I haven't gotten my hands on the software, but if you're like me, you've been watching the preview videos, you've been watching the teasers from on one, kind of, you know, dig in, look around a little bit. I've been doing the same. Well, now that they've announced the software, you know, I got some thoughts. I want to share them here and, uh, you know, go through the things that I am most excited about for this next release. Uh, really quick, if you are thinking about adding on one to your toolkit, upgrading from a prior version to 2024, please use my offer. Offer code SDP20, links in the show notes, doesn't cost anything extra, gives me a little bit of support so I can come and do more videos like this. Uh, so, Photo Raw 2024. Brilliance AI. This is where we got to start, and uh, I'm I'm gonna you know show some of the the, the teaser videos here that On One has done. But uh, the reason I want to unpack Brilliance AI is it's more than just an AI slider. You know, here's a slider. Give me some strength, and that's it. They've done a lot more with it, and. It's great for photographers. You get the easy version, or if you want to tweak and fine tune, you can get in under the hood and it's not hidden away from you. So let's have a look here at what's going on with this Brilliance AI tool. The Brilliance AI tool lives in the develop module and it sits above tone and color. This really becomes the first step in your workflow. And the way that things work, you, know, you, you turn the thing on, you can adjust the auto settings, there's more to it. You're not just a single slider. So you have controls over how much tone and color gets applied. And you can override certain methods that are being applied. You can get the hint that, you know, on one's going to be improving this over time. White balance. You have all those controls there. But what's really cool about it is when you want to go beyond this and the way that Brilliance AI is working under the hood is it's segmenting the photo. It's figuring out what's out there, what's in the photo. And in this example here, you know, it's a landscape. And so they figured out there's sky and there's, you know, flora, all the trees and so forth. And you have control over how much brilliance AI to apply to those regions. So you can dial those up or down individually. If the sky was, you know, too much or too little, you have that control. But it goes even beyond that, you know, just with those regions being built up and separated. Well, on one knows, well, these are the regions, these are the areas. They translate those into local adjustments with masks that you can refine even further. And this is really, really cool. You jump over into the locals area and you can see here's what Brilliance AI has done. It's created two different local adjustments. In this case, one for the sky, one for flora. And you have all of those controls there to even further manually tweak things. If you want the highlights to be a little brighter, the contrast to be a little bit different, you want to improve or change the mask to include or exclude certain areas, you know, something that uh, is just better suited to your photo, you can do all of that. And so why, why I'm excited about Brilliance AI is like what I said at the top, this is an AI tool. It gives you the easy button. It gives you the easy option. Here's the slider, dial up or down, and maybe you're done. You know, your photo, you're finished. If you need to go further, it's taking all of the, the AI smarts and then presenting it in familiar tools. If you're familiar with Photo Raw, you're familiar with how on-one tools work, you have the masks, you have the, the locals, you have all that stuff there, and you can fine-tune things even further. So you're not having AI hide away everything under the covers, and you can never tweak or touch things. You get the value of AI to speed up your workflow. But in those cases that you need to dig in a little further, you can and you can do easily and in a familiar way. And this works with portraits as well. You know, they've shown some portraits examples. Let's take a look at this. So once again, you turn on Brilliance AI, you get the magic, and when you expand the, the tool, you can see, all right, I, I can change the auto, I can change the tone, I can change the color. Here's found the regions, it's found a background, it's found a person, it's found a sky. This integrates with portrait. This will find, in this case, this model's face. And when you go into the portrait AI area, her face has been found. You can go and tweak and refine how the retouching was done on the individual face. If this is a group shot, I expect to see multiple faces there. And again, all of those segments that were found 
in the Brilliance AI tool, those get translated to local adjustments. So you have the background, the people, the sky, and those other tweaks that are happening. Like here for the, the person, you can clearly see that she is brightened up. So she jumps off the, uh, the, the, the pyramid there at the Louvre a little bit more. And so you have, again, the control here. And AI has done the heavy lifting for you. It's figured out what's in the photo. It's created the mask. It's done some fundamental changes to make the photo better yet giving you control over the final results. It's not, uh, you're not limited to here is, you know, the AI slider and you get all some or none. You get that level of control. If that's what you need, you need to go deeper. You need to dig in more. You have all of the, uh, the extra things that we are we're, we're used to in on one photo raw and you can tweak and fine tune things. And it's just, it's a, it's a very wonderful implementation. I really like how on one has taken the power of AI made it easy and approachable, yet not sacrificing control for photographers. So that's a Brilliance AI. That is really probably the marquee feature of Photo Raw 2024, but there's a lot more going on. Uh, the, the next thing I'm really happy about is searching in browse. This got revamped and I want to show you the, the, the searching experience in browse is just a whole lot better now. Now the way search used to be is you'd get this floating window and if you close the window it would disappear. It occupied a lot of screen space. It was you know kind of you know clunky and uh, what has has changed for for the better for sure is now you have a search toolbar. So if you're doing searching you know, up at the top you have you know no search at all. You can have all the different attributes. Just a text search. You can do things by colors and stars and you know what types of edits. Faces, if there are faces, how many, you know, gender, you know, age, all the AI bits and bobs are built into the search there for figuring those things out, as well as all of our classic metadata. But you notice this is all as a search bar. And so this will then apply to your current photos, your cataloged folders, the things that we're used to with search in Photo Raw. But now it's above your photos. You can work through the grid view, find things, and not have this floating window in your way. So the, the search experience is much, much better in Photo Raw 2024. And I'm very happy <laughs> I want to listen to, to all of us. I'm sure you're you're nodding your head along with this. This is a, a great improvement to search. And now you've noticed uh, also that the UI is different, right? You know, it's, it looks um, quite different uh, from uh, Photo Raw 2023 and 2022. Things are a little easier to read, things are a little more modernized. Uh, there's a few things that I want to highlight in particular as I studied the the, the teaser videos, there were a few things that jumped out to me about the UI that I do really like and I uh, want to highlight them here. So let, let me go through those things too. So at a glance, this is the new uh, you know, interface here. And it's just easier to read, right? You know, the, the sections are simpler to see. Catalog folders, cloud sync, albums, smart albums, those types of things. But also there's just less buttons. There's just less things in your face, really, you know, right? You know, you, you look up at the uh, the upper left now is where we have our, our tool well, and you have browse and you have edit. Those are the things that we spend most of our time with. If you need other stuff, you know, the, the triple dot menu is there. So you still have, you know, jumping to develop or local adjustments or any of the other things. If you have multiple photos selected, you can be merging them to layers, merging HDRs, doing all the things that we normally do in browse. But for you know the, the the key things that you care about, browse, edit, those are right there. And uh, from what I heard in the teaser videos, there is some capability to be able to add whatever icons you want on that left side. Again, I haven't seen the software yet, so I'm not sure if that's uh, that was me interpreting something incorrectly. But I'm hopeful that you know for those of us that you know maybe you do HDR often or maybe you do panoramas often enough that you want that button there, uh, there'll be a way to add that. You know, fingers crossed on that one. Uh, but also, I mean, if you are like old school and you've been using Photo Raw for a long time there is a mechanism to just have the, the right hand tool well show up and have everything that you're kind of used to seeing over on the right side. So that's, uh, that's, that's available if you wanted to just turn that back on and have it. Another couple of just niceties that I noticed uh, is in the views and the zoom area. Uh, the views, you know, we have, you know, the classic grid, you know, the, the full photo view, the film strip, and then you have some more specialty ones like compare or maps. 
And you may not use those all the time, and all those icons were just taking up space. Like maps in particular, I'll use occasionally. Right? You know, it's occasionally I care about maps. Well, well now things are, are, are consolidated. You have your grid view available all the time, and then the other views are uh, just you know, like, kind of like a hover slash pop-up kind of thing. And the, the, the second view, like in this example here, you can see that the, the full screen is selected. Uh, well, you know, you can pick something else like film strip or what have you but it will uh, be sticky. And it's like the last thing that you used as your secondary view is, is there for, for clicking. And similar with, with Zoom, like if we look at how Zoom works, you have a, an area now where you have fit, and in this case is currently 100. You can choose any of the other Zoom things. But now once you've, you've selected, say, you know, the, 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 the 200 there, that becomes sticky. And so it would be fit and 200. You can bounce back and forth between those two Zoom views. That, um, you know, that's, that's just helpful. That just makes things a, a more streamlined experience. When you're working with a set of photos, you know, the interface tailors itself to uh, how you're working. And you, know, you can choose to customize things that make the most sense for your workflow. Uh, another thing, uh, this, is, um, this is a big one for me, masking. So masking in Photo Raw. We know it's powerful, right? We've got all sorts of masks. You've got AI-powered masks. You've got luminosity masks, color range masks, line masks. The thing that's been confusing for a bunch of years, a bunch of iterations on the software, is you have the mask group, and you have the locals group, and then you have the face group, and all of these things are masks. And you know, it was honestly you know you get overkill you didn't need all these groups right you know everything you needed to do you can do with the masking group which had everything and on top of all that you had the refine group which was tools specifically to refine a mask well all of that's been unified into a single mask group whatever you're using you're doing an effect you're doing a layer you're doing a local adjustment you're working in portrait you know doing face work everything, all that stuff, it's a mask, right? It's a mask, a sky swap, it's a mask. So there's a single mask group, it's got all the masking tools in it, and it has the refine tools in it. So everything is in a single place. A single toolbar has all of the different masking tools, has your normal stuff for size and feather and opacity. And if you really need to dig into the details about a brush or you know turning on perfect brush or so forth, you have all of that there, all the different properties, all the things that we're used to, custom brush shapes, all of that stuff's in there. Uh, the one thing that I'll, I'll note, and I, this is not a final product, so maybe this will change, but uh, the perfect brush, learn the command key shortcut, command R, control R, to turn that on and off. That's like the one thing that isn't in the toolbar. You can easily you know, click on and off, but there's a keystroke for it, and you can toggle back and forth between that edge detection of the perfect brush pretty darn easily. And that's definitely how I work too, is I'd rather have my hands on the keyboard working with the mouse and uh, doing my masking and not you know jumping back up to the toolbar. Uh, but also, um, you've noticed here, and there's this masking, uh, like this, this floating window here, this uh, blending and masking area. That's something new as well. So when you have activated the mask for any filter or layer, you have all of your mask options, the ranges, color ranges, you know, different segments for mask AI. Those are in this floating window. So there's much more of a kind of a heads up display type of feel to the interface in Photo Raw 2024. So to me, those are the big features of Photo Raw 2024, at least what's been shared so far. Brilliance AI, for sure, that is a, a game changer in your workflow. And again, I'll repeat myself, I love the fact that you get the ease of use and power of AI without sacrificing control. That is that is a, a key thing, and I, I really appreciate how On One has implemented this, and you know doesn't uh, doesn't take away control from photographers. Uh, the you know, search experience way better. Masking, unifying all those tools. You know, thank you so much because the the, the tool sprawl was you know, was was getting uh, getting to be you know, kind of unwieldy and unnecessary, really, uh, as well as just a modern user interface, easier to see, less cluttered, and uh, you know will, will tailor itself to your use over time. But there's more coming, right? The, the you know, on one has has shared a, a bits and pieces here in some of their teaser videos, in particular with speed. So uh, things like 
previewing presets and browse, those thumbnails come up you know, almost instantaneously, you know, maybe a second and you see them all as opposed to like one second per each, uh, each preset in your group. Switching from browse to edit, you know, this is you know, super common, right? You've done your browsing, you know, maybe you've applied a preset, all right, time to go into edit, and it, you, know, you, you click and it's, it's almost instantaneous. You know, the, the screen, you know, if you weren't paying attention to the right-hand side, you wouldn't know things had changed. It is, it is that fast. Brushing speed, this one's huge. This has been you know, kind of a hit or miss on certain types of brushing, but they've really put in you know, work here from the previews that we've seen, brushing in different effects or different adjustments. You know, that's, uh, that's just so much smoother. The layers panel is getting some love too. You know, things where we can see not only here are my layers, but what's been applied to my layers. Turning on and off individual things on those layers without having to jump back down into effects or the portrait module or whatever it is you're working with. You know, those things are all really, really helpful. And if you have already done like a a pre-registration or a pre-purchase for Photo Raw 2024, you'll have been directed to a page where they have a list of other things that are coming as well. You know, other you know features and enhancements that are happening. More presets are coming. AI will recommend presets based on the photo you have. Improvements in highlight recovery. You know, more integration with Brilliance AI figuring out if noise reduction needs to be applied, if uh, portrait retouching needs to be applied, keyword AI enhancements, uh, better transform, text is becoming uh, layer based as opposed to a tool base. These are all you know, new things coming with PhotoRAW 2024. Haven't seen the teasers yet for them. Haven't gotten my hands on the software yet, but uh, hopefully I will soon. But w one other thing to cover with, uh, with this announcement that On One's made. They talk about On One Photo Raw and On One Photo Raw Max. As I was scrolling down there, you saw those big blue letters that said Max, you know, Photo Raw Max is coming. Well, what, what is Photo Raw Max versus Photo Raw? And really it comes down to a simple question. Would you like to use Photo Raw as a plugin to Lightroom, Photoshop, Capture One, and so on? If the answer is yes, that means your, your, your photo workflow starts in some other product other than on one. Adobe, Capture One, you know, all the other different you know, plugin ecosystems that On One supports. If that's where you start your photo work, then take a look at On One Photo Raw Max. You can run Photo Raw, the entire package, as a plugin. You don't need to go get individual plugins. You don't have to get On One Effects or On One Resize or No Noise. You can run Photo Raw and everything that it encompasses as a plugin. We used to have this a few years ago. I think in 2021, we still had Photo Raw running as a plugin, the entire package running as a plugin. That comes back with Max. And uh, I think there's a couple other tweaks there too. They give you some cloud storage and uh, activation for three computers. Normally it's been two. Uh, but the, the, the key thing here is if you want to run Photo Raw as a plugin to other packages, then look at Photo Raw Max. If your workflow already starts in On One Photo Raw, that's where you begin, then use On One Photo Raw. You don't need to care about Max. Uh, and that is really the difference. Feature wise, both are equivalent. You know, Photo Raw, Photo Raw Max, they all have the same features. All the stuff I just talked about, all the stuff I just went through, those are in both packages. It comes down to whether or not you want to run Photo Raw, the entire thing, as a plugin. And if the answer to that question is yes, take a look at Max. That is going to do it for uh, for this video. That's uh, you know, kind of the, the breakdown of the announcement that On One made. Looking forward to seeing more of their teaser videos. Looking forward to getting my hands on the software so I can get you a little more uh, real world hands on, you know, kind of, uh, you know, um, Scott touching and feeling the software to really get a handle on how it's operating. So, uh, you know, come on back and, uh, and <laughs> I'll have those videos posted when, uh, when I've gotten my hands on the software. You got other questions or thoughts, go ahead and share them below. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Have fun.